Hi, I've got the cat with me again today. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. Uh, so in this video, we're going to run through our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall performance for September 2019. All right, see you in a bit. Hi, John Tisbury here. If this is your first time here and you're interested in renewables, so solar, PV, Tesla Powerwall, uh, EVs, that kind of thing, I also do photography and cinematography on this channel, then click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell icon, and I shall see you in the future, hopefully. Um, I have the cat with me today, so this is going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> see how we get on. I'm sure she will get in the way, as is her way. You can probably hear her purring. Uh, so this video we're going to run through the performance for our solar um, installation and our Tesla Powerwall for September 2019. If you're not uh, a regular, um, where have you been? Um, but just bring you up to speed on our setup. We're in the UK, we're in the East Midlands. We have a, a 4 kilowatt uh, PV array, solar array, which is connected to a 3.8 SMA um, sunny boy inverter we also have a tesla powerwall 2 we have a my energy eddy which heats our hot water from excess solar we also have a, a my energy zappy version 1 which charges our two ev cars in terms of cars we have the hyundai kona and the uh, tesla model 3 we are on the Octopus Energy uh, cheap rate tariff, which is a dual rate tariff. Uh, it runs at 5p per unit per kilowatt uh, between 12.30 and 4.30. And all other times it's 13.45 pence. Yeah, that's about it. So there have been some key changes in our setup which have impacted um, our figures and uh, the figures that I record as well. So some aren't so relevant now and new ones I'm recording are relevant. So I'll chat to you about those changes first before we get into the stats. The um, I suppose the key change is the, the fact that on the 15th of August we moved across to the GO tariff, which so that's the cheap rate, dual rate energy. And to take advantage of that, I moved our Tesla Powerwall mode from self-power, which it was on, to time-based control cost saving. And I've already done a video on that, so I'm not going to go into that in a lot of detail. If you're interested in that video, the link is up here. Basically, what that has meant is that the, the Powerwall for the last sort of eight weeks has been working on a, a different sort of configuration um, in terms of our usage. And the algorithm within that Powerwall um, has been looking at our household routine, our energy consumption, that kind of thing. I say I've amended the spreadsheet slightly, not a major change, but so a slight change to it to, to compensate and account for those um, changes in um, setup or configuration. So what the Powerwall is now doing for us on its time-based control uh, cost saving is that during peak time, um, in terms of electricity pricing, it's trying to self-power the house and then off peak, it's generally it's charging. So we're also doing lots of other charging as well. So the EVs are being charged off peak as well. And uh, the kilns, uh, we've got two kilns in the glass studio. So they're also being set to come on off peak. Um, so it's quite a, a shift, uh, I guess, in terms of our um, approach to our generation. Uh, this time of year, we're getting less and less um, solar generation. Uh, we're seeing that dip down, which means we're having less excess solar to, to play with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, another probably key thing as well. We've both retired. Uh, so we retired at the end of September, um, which means that um, from, from sort of October onwards, I guess, is that um, we're going to be using more electricity because we're going to be here all the time. Anyway, chat more about that um, um, later. So let's have a look at the figures. Um, where are we? So for September 2019, our solar generation in kilowatt hours for the month was 436, which was down on August, um, July, June. Um, <laughs> and, and we're, we're getting into the, the shorter days now, so it's understandable that our generation will be lower. Our average 
daily solar generation was 14.5 kilowatts again that's down um, but, but about near June to be honest not far off June so um, just looking at that I was being a bit rotten really because um, June and September figures were about the same in terms of generation there wasn't actually that much in it over the course of the month um, but June was pretty poor and let's just have a look at that year on year so that works out uh, for September that's this one here um, 436 it was actually for the last three years the best September in terms of solar generation so it's quite interesting that um, even though month on month it was lower it was actually better than the, the previous two years but, so uh, yeah, it sort of puts things into perspective I think so in terms of the power wall and solar generation and contribution to our self power let's just have a look at that chart so in September 34% of our self power came from um, solar and 32% of it came from the power wall making a total of 68% self power over the month so that's quite a significant drop from the previous months and the two reasons for that really is one is less solar but probably the predominant one is the change in mode from self power mode to time based control cost saving and I'm putting a new chart uh, which is this little guy down here uh, I've just scrolled <laughs> past it so let's just get back to it there so this chart looks at the self power um, contribution of the power wall for peak and off peak and you can capture these figures now or see these figures within the power wall app so once you move it on to time based control you will get peak and off peak um, figures within the the power wall data set this is where I pulled these from so in September during our peak electricity time period we were 89% self powered and during our off peak we were 32% uh, self powered which means when the electricity is expensive basically 90% of the time or 89% of the time we were self powered uh, from the power wall which is um, awesome news and then when the electricity was cheaper um, we were obviously using it and pulling from the grid and uh, just 32% of that um, electricity was, was self powered at that time um, which sort of makes sense really because that electricity was going to be between 12.30 and 4.30 in the morning so not very sunny um, so whatever power is uh, um, self power there would be provided by the power wall so it's actually better that that figure is as low as it possibly can be in terms of percentage and uh, higher during peak time obviously so that's that um, if we have a look at the day by day for the month this day by day looks at our house usage in blue looks at our solar generation in yellow what we've exported in sort of orangey color and then what we've imported in red and um, as I say that the month hasn't been brilliant in terms of Sun we've only had a few days where we've peaked about 20 kilowatts there's been a few days where we've been very low on um, generation and under 10 watts uh, 10 watts that would be low <laughs> 10 kilowatts some of the house usage figures are high uh, we've got the, the two EVs now so they're getting charged and we've got the kilns but two electric kilns now um, so again they're getting charged during the the off-peak cheap rate so our electricity usage has been a lot higher in the household as a result we've imported more as well which you know I'm, I'm, I'm cool with um, that's going to be understandable in the in the short term till we make some um, adjustments to our um, setup we'll talk more about later so let's just have a look at that in a bit more detail on this chart so this chart looks at our average home usage and our average pull from the grid our monthly home usage was 25.4 kilowatts so that's quite significant it was that's heading into December figures the lowest figure in sort of May and June time we were 14 uh, kilowatts so the you know the EVs the cars have really um, taken a significant chunk of that our average from the grid has also risen it's almost double what we were doing in July and August that 14.1 for September so again um, you know that's the, the reasons why and if we look at our next chart which is our grid usage so what we've actually sent to the grid 
Um, it's quite high actually. 67.6 kilowatts sent to the grid and pulled from the grid 424 kilowatt hours. So again, quite high, but um, for those reasons. And it's interesting looking at what we've actually sent to the grid. If I nip back to that day by day figure that we were talking about a minute ago, and some of the export figures were towards the high export figures were towards the beginning of the month. Third and the fifth of um, September was high, 18th of September. And those were days where we were out at work. So not being able to take advantage of the excess solar and it was generally exported back to the grid. So that should again now change with us being retired. We can uh, take more benefit of that because the cars will be here and they can be plugged in. OK, so there are all the key ones I wanted to chat through. I'll bring up the, the Tesla app as well, bring up some of the stats on that so you can have a look at that in terms of the power wall. Oh, yes, I wanted to show you the, the power wall in and out as well, don't I? which is this graph here. Into the power wall, we had 292 uh, kilowatt hours and out of the power wall, we had 261, which made it 89% efficient, as it were, in terms of its turnaround, which was much, much better than August, where it was running at about 85. Yeah, so they're the, the, the key bits for us with um, in terms of performance. So I've mentioned previously uh, in another video that we're finding that our current PV setup isn't enough to furnish our needs with the two EVs, the two kilns, the, the fact that we're home all the time, um, and the, the power wall, uh, re the reducing amount of solar because of the, uh, the time of year. So we're finding that our four kilowatt setup isn't giving us enough um, electricity to be able to fill up the, the power wall and then um, take advantage of excess solar to do all the other things like heat hot water and charge the cars and what have you. So we're relying a lot more on the grid to pull in the, the additional electricity that we need. So to combat that, we will add a, more solar panels so we're looking at getting another um, system, probably about a 2.4 kilowatt um, at the inverter, uh, leads to about sort of six kilowatts in total. So a third bigger um, system, so, um, six panels, 3.9, um, 390 watts, um, the, the max to threes we're looking at. We've had a quote for those, or a couple of quotes actually for those. Um, so we're going to go ahead with that very, very soon and um, so I'll do, obviously do an update on that as and when that happens. But um, yeah, that's about it really. So I uh, hope you found that useful. Uh, those that are running their stats, let us know how you've got on with your monthly setup. And um, the cats come back now to say cheerio to you as well. So I shall see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. All right, take care, bye. Oh, hello. Yes, I thought you'd come and say hello. Yeah, was that good? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Right, turn all this off, Amber.